Welcome inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy, Ontario, as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club about to play their final home game in the regular season of this 2023 Major Series Lacrosse season. Once again, we're excited to have you here with us on this Wednesday night. He's Andrew Osmond. I'm Jack Moore. Thank you for joining us. Andrew, a big game. Two teams who are going to see each other in the first round of the playoffs. This could be our first of nine consecutive yeah. games with these two teams, but a big one in terms of momentum and Brooklyn can still sneak into that second place with some convincing play over the next two days. Yeah, it's going to be close for the Brooklyn to do so. They are sitting in those four points behind. Two games left for both teams. They will play once tonight and both teams' final games will take place in Peterborough again head-to-head. -head. So if Brooklyn gets those two victories, they can tie in points. It will be a matter of goal differential at that point to see if Brooklyn can get that home floor advantage come round one, as Jack, you mentioned. Potentially nine straight games starting today for Brooklyn and Peterborough going head-to-head. -head. One today, one to close out the regular season, and then a seven-game series uh, following as those two teams are set to face each other in round one. Peterborough with just two games left in the regular season. They are six points back behind Six Nations, so six Nations has locked up the number one seed in Major Series Lacrosse for the 2023 regular season as we take a look at the head-to-head -head matchup between Peterborough and Brooklyn in this season series so far and across the season again you see Brooklyn two games back in the record goals for the advantage goes to Peterborough. A lot of offensive power at the front end for this Lakers team. The other side of the of the coin, though, is you look at Brooklyn and on the power play, they actually sit second in major series of costs with 33 power play goals. Leading the leading the charge is Peterborough with just 34. They sit just one goal behind on the power play. And Brooklyn, on the other hand, as well, on the penalty kill side of it, have only allowed 14 penalty go uh, goals against on the penalty kill this season, which sits far at the bottom in terms of best-looking <laughs> numbers. Uh, for the MSL season. So in when it comes to special teams, Brooklyn looks to you know maybe have the upper hand in that, that category. And Brooklyn also leaning on a lot of young guys today, mm -hmm. not only members of the Brooklyn Merchants, but we're talking about members of the Whippy Warriors Junior A lacrosse team who are getting their first taste of major series lacrosse so far mm -hmm. this season. We see Lucas Littlejohn getting a goal and an assist in his first game of the year. Of course, coming up from the Whippy Warriors, and we'll see a number of those players here today so getting that good experience going into the postseason if Brooklyn calls their name and needs them when the time comes let's take us to the floor and the national anthem before ball drop and now for the Anthem over and we're getting set for the opening face-off here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, their final home regular season game of 2023. Andrew, let's take a look at tonight's starting goaltenders. And starting in effort, Peter Rural Lakers is going to be Landon Kells. He's coming off an overtime loss to Six Nations, his last appearance on July 20th, but don't be fooled by that. His four previous starts all win so he's coming in looking for revenge to get back in that win column where he's so used to being and on the other end of the floor we recognize that man riley hutchcraft getting the start once again for brooklyn taking the reins and taking over here as the number one goaltender midway through this season coming off a win 
and Brooklyn coming off back-to-back -back wins as well here, trying to make it three in a row for the first time this season. One, only once have they been sitting at two back-to-back -back wins, so they're going for three for the first time this year. Jake Withers wins the opening face-off against Jack Travassos, and Peterborough has the opening possession of this game. Again, the final regular season game at home for Brooklyn, and then both teams wrap up their regular seasons tomorrow night at the Peterborough Memorial Center. Tend to shoot here as Courier goes cross floor, and they score! Thomas Hogarth gets his 20th of the season, just 26 seconds in, it's 1-0 Peterborough. Well, Thomas Hogarth, one goal in their last game played, and he actually had seven assists, so for him, he's not used to scoring in the last little while, but he gets one here to open the scoring for Peterborough, one nothing, just like that on the opening possession of the ball game. Quick ball movement, and Hogarth wide open in front of the net, able to convert. The Lakers win the ensuing faceoff, so they'll go back to work on the man advantage. Uh, Go back to work at the offensive end of the four. Holding Katoni leads major series lacrosse and goals, assists, and points so far this season. A few points up on Lyle Thompson. And Katoni can't control that one in front of the net, but here's Courier and he scores. Back to back. These two come just 16 seconds apart, and it's 2 0 Peterborough. Josh Courier. Yeah, Courier here just down low waiting for a ball. You'll see him get the pass across the crease and he's left all alone. A bit of confusion there defensively for Brooklyn. All alone, a couple fakes and goes between the legs of Riley Hutchcraft. And in the opening minute, makes it 2 nothing. And Brooklyn here setting up defensively off this draw as they have to, as they lost another draw. Three face-offs in this one. Three face-off wins for Jake Withers and we're just over a minute into period number one in Peterborough with their third offensive possession to Brooklyn's none. And it's already a 2-0 lead for the Lakers. Here's Tate Katoni. Works it up top, Turner Evans. Evans, off to Hogarth. Now Turner Evans shot, that gets stopped by Hutchcraft. And Travassos finds the rebound for Brooklyn. And it looks like Brooklyn will be able to get their first offensive possession of the game. Brady Kiernan. Liam Osborne. Tanner Cook out there as well. Playing well in his first three games of the season as Osborne goes down, gets checked to the floor, so it'll remain Brooklyn ball. And now with a fresh shot clock. Kiernan goes up top. Boyden getting a screen from Osborne. Down low, Osborne in front of the net. And he scores! First offensive possession for Brooklyn, and they respond. Liam Osborne gets his ninth of the year. And if you're Jason Crosby and the coaching staff for Brooklyn, you're going to be happy about this. You gave up two back-to-back -back goals on the first two possessions offensively for Peterborough, and you're on your first offensive possession. You draw a foul, get some extended game uh, shot clock in the other zone, and you make use of it with Liam Osborne getting Brooklyn on the board. It's 2-1 Peterborough here in the opening two minutes of the game. So he gets some offense early, but that's big momentum there for Brooklyn to try and ease it off, and now need a defensive stop as that shot stopped by Hutchcraft. So Riley Hutchcraft settling in after the first two offensive possessions as Quinn Highland into the offensive zone in transition for Brooklyn. Highland has Little John off the bench. Lucas Little John. Off to Osborne. Osborne to Tanner Cook. Off to the boards. Here's Routing. His shot gets stopped by Kells. Rebound in front of the net. That gets stopped. Another one. And Kells makes another save right on the doorstep. Angus Routing with a good chance in front of the net, but can't convert. Tanner Cook had another opportunity as well. Six goals, seven assists in just three games for Cook coming into tonight. Holden Katoni. Works it around, Tate Katoni with it now. McLaughlin on the screen. Katoni being defended by Ben McDonnell. Hazen works it off, long shot, kicked out by the right palm of Riley Hutchcraft. Yeah, great stop there from Hutchcraft, giving up two goals on the first two shots he faced, and now that's back-to-back, -back, stops and gets the ball moving up the floor for his team. 
Brooklyn on the attack. Pilt, uh, sorry, that Boyden shot gets stopped. Brooklyn picks up the rebound and the fresh shot clock, but it gets knocked loose, and Peterborough looking to go away with it. This time it gets picked up by Boyden, and another fresh shot clock starting in the offensive zone here for Brooklyn. Now that shot misses the net. Boyden picks it up as Pilcher went down in the crease. Tanner Cook can't keep it at the offensive end of the floor, and that's over and back against Brooklyn. Now you mentioned it, Tanner Cook coming in kind of hot. Three goals, or sorry, only three games played with Brooklyn this season. And without Kyle Waters in the lineup, Tanner Cook's going to be that big, big body to lean on here against Peterborough. Josh Courier already with a goal in this one. Holden Katomi works it around up top. Good ball movement here by the Lakers. His career shot gets stopped by Hutchcraft, and Ryan McCrory picks up and starts the transition. Little John and Darren Elliott off the bench for Brooklyn as Little John picks up. Elliott. Off to Boyden. Now here's Brady Kiernan. His shot slips out of the cradle and went off to the far boards before Mitch Ogilvie starts the transition the other way. Matt Gilray. It's a back to Turner Evans. Tate Katoni. 20, uh, 20 assists on the year to go with his 15 goals, so a well-balanced attack at the offensive end. Turner Evans. Off to Milligan. Now here's Austin Hazen. Hazen quickly off to Tate Katoni. Over the top, missed the net. That's a shot clock violation against Peterborough. Good defensive stop there for Brooklyn after giving up those two goals on the first two possessions. Good, good solid stop there to let that shot clock expire. Tanner Cook starts the offense here for Brooklyn. Angus Routing missed the net, goes off the back of the Peterborough cage, and now a stretch pass up the floor for Armstrong, bounces in front of the net, stopped by Hutchcraft. Colton Armstrong with a long stretch transition breakaway, but he gets stopped by the Brooklyn goaltender, and Brooklyn's back the other way offensively. Now up top, Little John steps in, that shot gets blocked. Getting in the shooting lane was Chad Tutton. That got deflected, so no over and back against Brooklyn, and Tutton wins the loose ball against Little John. Tutton, off to Courier. Flips it back to Tutton and holding while he waits for his teammates to come off the bench. Hogarth, off to Holden Katoni. Katoni to Hogarth. Now works it down low, Courier in front of the net, knocked out of his cradle, Travasso's there on the defensive play. Backhand shovel shot goes wide. Off the stick of Milligan, and Hutchcraft able to find the loose ball and start Brooklyn up the floor. Darren Elliott driving into the net, stepped in the crease. It's Peterborough ball. Did a good job to slip away from the Peterborough defender. Couldn't beat Kells, and his foot was in the crease about a half step too early. Thomas Hogarth steps away from Highland. Now it's Austin Hazen. Quick pass off the side of the net, picked up by Brooklyn on the rebound. And Caleb Creaser will start the transition with Quinn Highland. Creaser, the former Peterborough Laker, who was acquired via trade a few weeks back. Pilcher. Over the top, that shot gets stopped by Kells. Bouncing ball picked up by Peterborough, and Robert Hope's away in transition. He has a two-on-one. Robert Hope being chased down, kicked out by Hutchcraft. Now Pilcher shovels this one off to the speedy Jordy Jones-Smith. Looking to drive in on Ogilvy. He scores! Does it himself, Jordy Jones-Smith in transition, and we're tied at two. And make that his first goal of this MSL season. Takes it all the way up the floor. Gets around his man, Mitch Ogilvy, and then beats the goaltender, the last person he needs to, and Landon Kells, and ties this game up at two. You see him here, just a little juke to the outside. Gets that extra step, stays out of the crease, and gets the ball over the shoulder of Kells for his first goal of the season, which is great to see from Jordy Jones-Smith, a guy who's really leaned on in the transitional game here. 
for Brooklyn and has missed some time. Only five games played in this season here in the 15th game of the season. So good to see him get on the board. Now looking for a quick response. Hogarth missed the net off the side. Didn't hit anything, so no shot clock reset. But Owen Tapper takes the ball away, and he brings it up the floor. Tapper works it out down low. Brady Kiernan over the top. Kell's got a piece of that one, and Ogilvy finds it. Now it's Hogarth down the floor. Hogarth couldn't control the pass, and Hutchcraft knocked it down, but Hogarth picks it up in the corner. Mitch Ogilvy has Peterborough with the offensive position. Austin Hazen trying to step away from Creaser. Now it's Milligan. Up top, Tate Catoni steps into one. Hutchcraft the save. It was loose in the crease, but Ryan McCrory with the defensive play as that one bounces into the protective meshing and out of play. And it's Brooklyn ball. They also like how on Jordy Jones Smith goal. His first reaction was to look back at the official, making sure he didn't step in yeah, the crease, yeah. but he was clear. As Brooklyn drives in, Kells makes the save. Penalty coming up to Peterborough. Quick ball movement. Little John gets stopped by Kells, and Brooklyn's going to the first power play of the game. We're eight minutes, 37 seconds into period number one, and we're tied at two. And it's going to be Robert Hope going to the box for two minutes or less for this infraction. You'll see the Brooklyn player cutting in. He just has that stick up too high there and then pushes him down to the floor. Had the stick up and around the neck for a bit too long there without trying to poke the ball free. So we'll get a first look at the power play for Brooklyn here. Brooklyn a little upset that the referee didn't wait until Hutchcraft was back in the net to start the ensuing play. Is Tanner Cook up top with 10 to shoot. Little John has it go off his shoulder into the protective meshing and out of play. So Peterborough gets the ball, no shot in the first position of the power play here for Brooklyn. Holding Katoni off the bench for Peterborough, and this is where that high-powered offense can be lethal. Trying to get some goals shorthanded here for Peterborough and turn the table on special teams. Milligan open in front of the net, picks up, steps away from the defender. Now, sharp angle shot stopped by Hutchcraft. And a foul against Brooklyn will give Peterborough back the ball. So back-to-back -back possessions. This one comes 30 seconds after the ball went out of play. Mm -hmm. So almost a full minute if they can take this shot clock down. Holding Cotone in the corner. Being checked by Jack Travassos. Carter McKenzie watching as well as Cotone runs it around to the near side. Milligan into the corner. Out of the reach of Josh Courier. So Brooklyn gets the ball back with 40 seconds to go in the power play. Power play goal here with Tynum with Peterborough for the league lead in power play goals with 34. They're sitting on 33 now. Pilcher up top. Gets the screen from Cook. Off to Kiernan. Brady Kiernan to Cook up top. Long shot kicked out by Kells. Rebound into the corner, picked up by Brooklyn. Ten seconds to go on the power play. Tanner Cook to Little John. Pilcher, Little John steps in, stopped by Kells. Rebound side of the net, bouncing into the crease. And Kells recovers and finds it. Fresh out of the box. Hope picks up in transition for Peterborough. McLaughlin. Lost it. Caleb Creaser in transition now. Creaser sidesteps, gets a screen, and waits for some help. And we'll use the entirety of the shot clock here as Tanner Cook off the bench back onto the floor. Smart play there by Creaser to, when he realized he didn't have the step on his man to go to the net, to just calm down, let the offensive guys get on the floor, and use that shot clock. Ten to shoot now for Brooklyn. Boyden puts it on net. Kells makes the save. Rebound picked up by Brooklyn. Kiernan off to Cook. Now it's Pilcher, switches spots with Cook. That one whistles high of the crossbar. Rebound picked up by Peterborough and Jake Withers, who's been dynamite on the faceoffs early on in this one. Starts transition, take Katoni in front of the net. Thomas Hogarth holds and walks off to the sideboards with 15 to shoot. Penalty coming up here to Brooklyn, so Peterborough take this down 
And then they'll go to their first power play of the game. Holden Katoni steps in. Now Hogarth underneath. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft. And we'll get a slashing penalty coming up against Luke Pilcher. So Peterborough is going to their first power play of the game. And it was quite the healthy hack that Luke Pilcher laid on Thomas Hogarth as he was coming off the floor. Hogarth now talking to Riley Hutchcraft. You'll see it here at the bottom. Ball's nowhere near and right there on the left hand. Luke Pilcher just gets it right on Hogarth, right on his hands. Who had a few choice words for Luke Pilcher as he head off to the bench on that change. So we'll see a power play here for Peterborough. Both teams average about 2.4 goals for on the power play each game. Holding Katoni over the top. That shot gets stopped. Evans tried to flip it off to McLaughlin. Couldn't find it in the corner, but a shot clock reset for the Lakers. Holding Katoni to Turner Evans. Holding Katoni up top. Off to Evans. Katoni. Waiting, shooting, and he scores. 26th of the season for Holden Katoni. That one came just 34 seconds into the power play, and it's 3-2 Lakers. And that's what a veteran squad does here on the power play in your first chance offensively. You work the ball, the top of the key there, a little bit back and forth. You look for your shooting lane. You get the defender there to cheat a little bit, as it was Mitchell White, Michael White, that Went a bit to his right and opened up that shooting lane for Holden Katoni. And got it past Riley Hutchcraft for the third goal and got Peterborough the lead back here in the first period. Another face-off win for Withers as Gilray streaks in. Stopped by Hutchcraft. Brooklyn can't find it in transition as Tapper lost it. Creaser was ready to go. <laughs> Yet again. Has to set up defensively here. Turner Evans in the corner being watched by Highland. Screen from McLaughlin. Evans scores, picks the top far corner and restores the two goal Peterborough lead. It's 4-2 Lakers. Turner Evans is gonna cut and get a couple picks and a couple of uh, off ball assists from his teammates there. You see him pushing a couple guys away. Katoni comes in, draws a bit of a pick there and opens up a shooting lane to get that pass Riley Hutchcraft. But the defense for Brooklyn on that last possession was just more than one step behind in that man coverage. Just not following that ball or picking up their man as quickly as they need to. They get it again off the face off. Evans works it off. That pass got knocked down by Ryan McCrory. Brooklyn in transition. Creaser couldn't find it into the corner. Caleb Creaser battling is Thomas Witte draped all over him. McCrory comes away with it. Ten seconds to shoot for Brooklyn as Lucas Littlejohn off the bench. Tanner Cook drives in over the top, stopped by the mask of Kells, and the rebound picked up by Thomas Witte. Witte checked by Littlejohn, but stays on his feet and throws it into the corner for Hazen. Tate Katoni working against Michael White. Milligan drives in, shot stopped by Hutchcraft, and the rebound picked up by Tapper, but he stepped into the crease. And that's going to be Peterborough Ball, 6-0-1 to go in the first period. Peterborough streaking in as McLaughlin turned that one over, and Ben McDonnell brings it up the floor as he flips it off to Tapper. Tapper. Drops this one back for Boyden. Tanner Cook up top. And that's going to be a foul against Brooklyn in the offensive floor thanks to Luke Pilcher. So away goes Withers in transition. Drops it for Katoni. Holden Katoni scores. Second of the game for Holden Katoni and it's 5-2 Peterborough. Well, Holden Katoni just comes right off the bench, gets right into the play and because Brooklyn was also changing. It was just a mixed match there, and the player a bit late to getting to cover Katoni coming off of the bench. And he gets his second goal of the game and makes it 5-2 Peterborough here with 5.26 to go in the first. It was 2-0 Peterborough. We were tied at 2. 
three unanswered from the Lakers, including two of those from Holden Catoni and one of those from Turner Evans, and Brooklyn wins the faceoff. Darren Elliott, the offensive end of the floor. Osborne, back for Elliott. Elliott drops it back to Little John. Now here's Kiernan. Brady Kiernan drops this one back. Angus routing. Goes cross floor and a foul against Jake Withers as Kiernan went down to the floor in front of the Peter Bronette. So a cl shot clock reset here for Brooklyn. Now routing shot over the top and stopped by Kells. And he sends it down the floor for Jordan Sturros. Hazen. Into the corner for Courier. Courier flips it down low. Here's Hazen again. Austin Hazen waiting, shoots, and that missed the net. I thought Hutchcraft might have got a piece of it with his right hand, but they said no. Shot clock violation against the Lakers, so it's Brooklyn ball. Here's Pilcher, fresh off the bench with Boyden and Cook. Kiernan steps off, and so does Routing. Tanner Cook. Gets the screen, Kiernan in front. That one went right onto Kells and he was able to knock it down. Pass up the floor and Blake Gibson McDonald drops it back to Turner Evans. 21 goals now on the season to go with this 31 assists. So 52 points near the top of the table. In terms of major series lacrosse, his career down low, flips it off to Tate Catoni with three to shoot. Tate Catoni being watched closely, fires a shot after the shot clock, and it's Brooklyn Bull. Now you mentioned the strength of this Peterborough team. They got four out of the 10, top 10 in scoring in the MSL this season. One of those though, at least in the top 10 for Brooklyn is Connor Kiernan. Unfortunately for Brooklyn, not in the lineup tonight. So they're gonna have to do so without him if they want to get the win here today. No Connor Kiernan, no Kyle Waters. Tanner Cook drops it back for Pilcher, knocked out of his cradle, went off the ref, and Cook picks up with 15 to shoot. Cross floor pass as Osborne was tied up, and Peterborough will come away with it, Mitch Ogilvy. Gilray works this one down low. Milligan up top being watched by McDonnell as that shot missed the net and bounces right to Gilray. Ogilvy fires a shot, Hutchcraft to save and scoops it up so Milligan couldn't find it for Peterborough. Under three minutes to play here in period number one, a 5-2 Peterborough lead. Major series lacrosse on Rogers TV, Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond with you. Brady Kiernan. In the corner, works it back to center, and that's going to be over and back against Brooklyn. We welcome on those who are watching on your TV and Peterborough. Pete, Scott, and Dan do a great job, and the whole crew at your TV of covering the Lakers all season long. And of course, like our crew here at Rogers TV Durham, they cover the OHL champion Peterborough Pete, so a lot of winning in that building going on <laughs> as of late. Man Cup championship with the Lakers last year, OHL championship for the Pete's. Not that long ago against the London Knights. Now Caleb Creaser steps in. That one stopped by Kells and the rebound picked up by Woody. Matt Gilray in transition. Drops this one back to Milligan. Turner Evans being watched by McDonnell. Now gets the switch on to Highland. McLaughlin gets tied up, and that's going to be a penalty against Brooklyn. Quinn Highland called. Eli McLaughlin was streaking in, but his stick was tied up, and the Lakers, who are one for one on the man advantage, go back to the power play with 146 to go in the first. Yeah, second time on the power play. You mentioned it one for one so far, and they scored rather quickly on their first possession on the power play. We'll see if they do so again. Holden Catoni's gonna work the point again. See if he can get a second one. Catoni flips it off. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft and McDonnell runs away with the rebound.
Franklin gets it over center floor and looking to kill off some time late in the first period. Peterborough scored three unanswered. As Liam Osborne steps in, his shot gets blocked. McDonnell looking for the rebound, picked up by Cook. Five to shoot for Brooklyn. Cook spins away underneath, fires that one, and picks up his own rebound, but it didn't hit anything. So a shot clock violation against Brooklyn, and it's going to be Peterborough ball. Turner Evans. Starts it up for Peterborough. Holden Katoni. Courier. Down low for Hogarth. Courier gets it back. Katoni steps in, flips it off. Turner Evans. Back to Katoni. Steps in off the post. And that ball bounces back into pre Peterborough territory. No over and back. And Kells will just leave this one for Eli McLaughlin. Shot clock reset. He is looking to the bench here. Landon well, Kells is. Game clock lower than the shot clock here, so Peterborough already with the advantage. Doesn't need the extra man. And we'll just work this around and try and take the last shot of the period. Turner Evans in behind the Brooklyn net. Pass in front, Holden Katoni gets stopped by Riley Hutchcraft who traps it down. And this will end period number one. So the Peterborough Lakers score on the first two possessions of the game. Brooklyn on their first possession gets a goal back. They tie the game at two, but then three unanswered by the Lakers, and they take a 5-2 lead going into the first intermission, and they'll start with 14 seconds on the power play for period number two. Yeah, the first half of that period, a bit of back and forth. Brooklyn able to get back and tie it up at two, but yeah, as you said, three unanswered goals for Peterborough to kind of take control here, and they will have that power play to start the second period. Brooklyn looking for their ninth win of the year. Peterborough looking for their 11th and to secure second place in major series lacrosse in 2023. We'll take a break and we'll be back with Ron McSpaden from the Ontario Lacrosse Association coming up next on Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. When you're away from the gym, here's what CrossFit Oshawa does to keep fit. I want to show you a pull up today because it's a functional movement that utilizes your entire body. If that's too challenging, scale it back to a jumping pull up. Box jumps are great because they help you develop power in your lower body, and if you do enough reps, they elicit a great cardio response as well. We jump, land, and stand. To make that easier on your ankle, we can jump, land, stand, and step down. Burpees are everyone's favorite. They have a love-hate relationship uh, because they're so great at developing uh, that cardio response. In a burpee, chest goes to the floor, jump and clap overhead. Another one that I love to do is just getting out and running with the dog. I'll see you outside. Hi, I'm Sean Lackey, and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world.
Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy, the Ontario Lacrosse Festival coming up quickly here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. And now joining us is Ron McSpadian from the Ontario Lacrosse Association, the program director. Ron, thank you very much for joining us. What can you tell the people about the Ontario Lacrosse, Associ uh, uh, Lacrosse Festival and what it's all about coming into the festival starting on August 4th? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's great to be back here uh, in Durham Region. Whitby is sort of the hub of all the action. Uh, with 55 more teams than last year. We're at 388, a few less than our peak pre-COVID. But as you guys know, bringing sport back is a difficult challenge, but we've had a great year doing it. And again, 55 more teams this year is a good signal, right? Wall-to-wall -wall across for uh, 10 days coming up here, 39 uh, provincial championships. And you got seven divisions, one of which is a girls' division. Talk a bit about the, you know, the range and age and skill level and all this sort of stuff that people can witness here in the Durham region. For sure. And so everything in terms of the age divisions themselves, they would go from the youngest kids. You know, we're talking uh, athletes that are about uh, six or seven years old, uh, up to uh, 22 years old in there there's both uh, men's and women's competition um, the uh, teams are of course ranked and rated based on their performance during the season so there's tiers from a b c d e you know it it goes down from there but again everybody finds their place based on the level that they've played at during the year and that's what makes our provincial so um, so competitive in terms of parity right within the age divisions now what can uh, people expect when they come and they check things out here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy what kind of lacrosse can they expect to see and and what teams are we looking at competing this year yeah so you know, we, we do have eight championships here for the, the U13, U15, 17, which is among the best lacrosse, of course, in the province, right? Um, these players are elite in a lot of things they do, not just, of course, right lacrosse, but it's great to have them. They'll be here as part of it. Uh, the whole vendor environment, right? We've got, we got everything that goes on around the event itself. Uh, some great um, sponsors that have been with us so, over time, right? Uh, the the uh, sport tourism guys have been very supportive of what we do. Uh, they've done great things for the region, not just for, you know, our event, Booster you've been with us for a while um, you know it, it goes on and on but lots of a, a good atmosphere and environment here outside of just the games themselves and you talk about the 55 additional teams that are playing this year give us a range of where these teams are coming from where's the furthest team coming from for this specific weekend yeah, yeah good question i mean they're from all over the province right i yeah. mean there's sioux st marie there's ottawa there's windsor there's everything in between right mm -hmm. so there really is a range of provincial representation right at the event um and again we're talking about 388 teams so it's you know it's a lot of teams it's a little short of 9,000 players so you know again there's um parents that come along with that there's an economic impact for you know this region that's significant in terms of food and beverage accommodation spending you know all the rest of it right which is um you know why we're happy to be here because we get supported well from uh, not just whitby but durham region in general well you get supported well and then the lacrosse that comes out is very high end and a lot of these ontario players are able to go play at college university both in canada and south of the border and we see a lot of them now playing in major series lacrosse playing right. in the nll some of them go on to play in the uh, pll as well you know how important is that development these kids getting together and and from all across the province to play each other so that they can get better and get to that next level yeah you know you bring up a great point because in terms of the competitive structure of minor lacrosse in the province you know there's no place like this in the world as it relates to the competitive level of box lacrosse right that's why our players end up everywhere and of course they dominate team canada performances as well right at the world games at hopefully olympics coming up um you know whatever, wherever it is there's ontario players there and it's the result of the player development model that we have you know starting as early as the kids are I'll never forget you know the with the one comment when we first ran nationals and you know Rogers were right by us there for you know about 14 years great to have them uh, when we're running national championships but you know the the, the many other provinces uh, parents when they would come here they were absolutely stunned by how good mm. the Tyke or u9 u11 players were like they just couldn't believe how good players were at that age that quick in Ontario they had never seen that you know from the other provinces right um, so it's a good it's a good indicator of where lacrosse is what the OLA does what uh, the commitment is for players and parents to this game and it shows up here on this floor right I mean the, all these guys here have been through mm -hmm. um, all our qualifier programs our provincials and all the rest of it talk, talk a bit about that those especially the younger guys and the younger ones playing in this tournament what's it like for you to watch them play at such a young age and just seeing the fun and enjoyment they have over those few days in a tournament you know, coming way across country or across the province, staying in a hotel and having that full experience. What's it like kind of yeah. seeing them enjoy that? Yeah, yeah, and you know who that is, right? Yeah. For, for all of us, right? But you know what the key is for me, having seen 18 years of this thing, yeah. right, is that the youngest kids get better and better as we go, right? Technology is a part of that, you know, the sticks and, 
and some of the other technology in the game helps them along, but there's never been better athletes, they've never been faster, they've never been better in terms of nutrition, training, all the rest of it, right? And that's starting at really younger ages now, which is great, which is why you see the performance levels at, you know, 13, 14, and 15, way beyond where they were, even like four or five years ago. Like, that's how, that's how much it's moving, right? And it's noticeable, right? But I think, yeah, I think that it is a good point as to what you see and what they bring and the commitment they make, right? Yeah. And it's a big deal, right? It's a big deal. It's provincial championships. It means something. You've been playing all year for it, right? Yeah. I mean, this is why you come here. Well, there's a big reason for them to come here. It's the provincial championships, the Ontario Lacrosse Festival. Ron McSpadian from the OLA, thank you very much for joining us. Peterborough leads Brooklyn 5-2 to two at the first intermission. We'll be back with period two after this. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. Thank you very much. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Karim Grant. I am the host of The Player's Corner. Season two is coming right at you. Make sure you stay tuned. We have a lot of exciting guests right here at Rogers Durham TV. Make sure you're there. Hey, I'm Chef Corey Duran, host of a show on Rogers TV, Georgina, called Cooking with Corey. Join me bi-weekly for brand new episodes where I teach you not only what to cook, but how to cook. The only thing missing is smell o vision That's Cooking with Corey right here on Rogers TV, Georgina. It was the most enchanting evening of my entire life. Watch all your favorite heartwarming episodes of When Calls the Heart on Demand. Be ashamed to put my talent to waste. Ah. And cherish all the seasons from the beginning. Well, it sounds pretty good to me. And be sure to join us July 30th for the much-anticipated 10th season. This is so exciting. Fantastic. When Calls the Heart, seasons 1 to 9, only on Super Channel On Demand. For 25 years, you've been helping to make our roads safer by doing the right thing. You've been the designated driver. You've stayed over, called home. You've called a cab or a friend and planned ahead. Let's keep doing the right thing. Support sober driving by getting yourself and your friends home safely. Do the right thing. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. Hi, I'm Angel Morgan, host of Raising Energy on Rogers TV. Join us each week as we are back in the studio doing live psychic readings. Check out rogerstv.com for airtimes. Hi, I'm Jennifer. And I'm Allison. Coming up on the next episode of The Parenting Show, we're talking about sleep training for all ages. That means parents and children alike, we're going to give you tips to get healthy. That's only on Rogers TV. Big first period for Holden Cotone with two goals, and he plays with his brother Tate here in Peterborough. But guess what? They're also going to play together in the NLL. Holden Cotone just traded <laughs> to the Philadelphia Wings in the National Lacrosse League from the Rochester Nighthawks. Hunter Lemieux going the other way. Some picks being swapped as well, but that news breaking through during the intermission, Andrew. Yeah. So Holden Cotone, Nami only making headlines here in this one with a two goal first period but making headlines in terms of the nll and the nll offseason yeah just seeing that come across twitter during that intermission i'm not sure if he even knows i don't know if the kill the, the katoni brothers know maybe it was something those two goals in the first period said okay we got to make this trade we need holding on this squad to play with his brother because they play so well together but yeah never seen that before a trade mid-game in another league obviously but a trade mid-game where two brothers that play here together with Peterborough will now play together at that level in the NLL. Peterborough wins the faceoff to start period two, and Gilray's shot gets stopped by Hutchcraft. That was just with ten, uh, four seconds left in the power play, so we'll get back to five on five. Peterborough on a 3-0 run offensively. Tanner Cook works this one off. Now it's Osborne trying to shoot through traffic. It got blocked by Armstrong. Bouncing ball in front, and it gets picked up by Peterborough. Robert Hope streaking in. Off to Katoni, and that gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Looking to score his first goal since joining the Philadelphia <laughs> Wings. The other two, he was still a part of Rochester, even though he's playing in major series lacrosse. Kobe Hanser 
Works this one off. Now driving in is Boyden, and he gets stopped by Kells down in the crease. Referee's arm is up, and we'll see what the call is. Jack Boyden looking for his seventh of the year. And it looks like it's Thomas Witte who will be going to the penalty box. So Peter Rowe, one for two on the power play, now going to their second penalty kill of the game. Brooklyn 0 for 1 on the man advantage so far. And this will be something Brooklyn will like to utilize as best they can as we take another look at that penalty. But they're playing today without Zach Kerrigan, Connor Kiernan, and Kyle Waters. So essentially a bit of a makeshift power play unit here. The first power play unit, at least for Brooklyn. A guy like Zach Kerrigan started the season with seven goals in his first two games. Only had one more goal a couple games later and has zero goals in about a month or so. So he was a, riding a bit of a cold trip and not playing today, but he was the guy using some of that power play time. Lucas Littlejohn, of course, plays Junior A with Whippy. Being called up for the last two. He gets the ball here over the top. That gets stopped by Kells. It squeaks out. And it's going to be Peterborough ball with Brooklyn touching it in the crease thanks to Luke Pilcher. Gilray trying to bounce this one in for Holden Katoni, but it goes right down to Hutchcraft. So Brooklyn gets it right back. Carter McKenzie will bring it up the floor here. Had about a second and a half to spare. On the eight second clock to get it over mid floor. And Brooklyn's power play goes back to work. Pilcher's shot gets stopped by Kells. Rebound, Pilcher shoots, that gets blocked in front. Chad Tutton getting in the way of that one. And Mitch Ogilvy finds the rebound for Peterborough. Tutton works this one off to Holden Katoni. Tutton back to Milligan. Pass in front of the net, that one goes wide. And went off the post, Brooklyn has a man down the floor, but McCrory couldn't control the ball on the first bounce. Steps away from the four checker, and Brooklyn brings it back up the floor with 30 seconds to go in the power play. Jack Boyden, Jason Crosby wants a call from the official on that play, won't get it. Tanner Cook, up top, gets the screen, off to Boyden. Now back to Cook, cross floor, Little John stopped by Kells, and he squeaks it, uh, squeezes it into the chest protector and holds it close. Now Colton Armstrong, being watched closely, steps away from Hanser, drops this one back to Withers. Now it's Eli McLaughlin, off the boards being watched by Jones Smith, Austin Hazen, over the top, he scores! It got through, it's 6-2 Peterborough. And just after their penalty expires and they get their man back on the floor, Austin Hazen is gonna get that ball and get that shot just squeaking through. Riley Hutchcraft who couldn't squeeze it just between the legs. He knew it was there. You see him react afterwards to try to close the wickets, but it was too late as the ball was already trickling into the net for the sixth goal for Peterborough. Withers again on the face-off win for Peterborough on a bouncing ball that Travassos plays into the air, but he can't get it back as Withers finds it and drops it back for Matt Gilroy. Turner Evans off to take Katoni. Off to holding Katoni. Works that one off is Hazen in front of the net. Katoni into the corner. Pass in front. Courier couldn't control it. Away goes Quinn Highland. Highland off to Pilcher. Pilcher off to Boyden. Now pass in front. Tanner Cook. Centering pass. Boyden picks up the bouncing ball. Now worked off to Cook. That shot gets stopped by Landon Kells. The battle for it in the far corner. Cook comes away with it. Plays for Calgary in the National Lacrosse League with Kyle Waters. Of course, no Waters here tonight for Brooklyn. Pass into the corner. Bounces back in front of the net. Boyden couldn't control it. Kells knocks it down to the end boards and corrals it. Mitch Ogilvy 
Steps over center past Jordy Jones-Smith. Real close to the time violation to get it over center floor is Hogarth. Off to Courier, into the corner. Courier streaking in front of the net, gets the pass, Hutchcraft the save, and they score! Josh Courier, the second one that gets through Hutchcraft and then bounces into the Brooklyn net. That's five unanswered, and it's 7-2 Lakers. Yeah, the second goal just to squeak through, and also the second goal of the game for Josh Courier. Right here, the shot, well, well the pass goes across, rather, and the shot just is right there dribbling through, and the ref right there on the line. We'll see it here. He says it crosses the line. It was close. It was close. <laughs> the official said it bounced in. We don't have an over top angle to really see it as we have a bit of a break here as the two goaltenders are taking a water break. Riley Hutchcraft, uh, I think having some assistance done on his equipment. He's at the far end of the, of the bench having some water. Yeah, it looks like he's getting his Right we'll shin see, pad. We'll see it here. I like. I don't know I, if it did cross. It's the second attempt. It must have. They must have seen it in the air there across the line. Oh, okay. So they put it. At Brooklyn. Maybe if it did go it in the in. first time. It yeah, went in the yeah. second time. Hutchcraft back into the net for Brooklyn. And Withers with another face-off win here for Peterborough, but it gets knocked out of his cradle, cradle by Travassos. So not giving up on the play, and now has a chance the other way in transition. Jack Travassos in and scores! Jack Travassos stops the bleeding and ends the five-goal run for the Lakers to pull Brooklyn back within four. Another one of these transitional guys, Jack Travassos, Leaps in, avoids the crease, gets it over Landon Kells for Brooklyn's third goal of the game. Similar to Jordy Jones-Smith. That's Jack Travasso's second goal of the game, only, or second goal of the season only, for Jordy Jones-Smith. As one of the other Brooklyn goals, he only had his first, so. The quieter guys offensively getting it on the board for Brooklyn here. Oh, and Tapper with a good effort there. Gets knocked off the ball by Withers. Fighting off two Lakers to spring that one free, but just couldn't finish the play. And Peterborough once again gets a possession off a of faceoff. Travasso scoring the goal there, so they gave him a break. Owen Tapper doing a good job to make the effort as Katoni's shot gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound picked up by Tapper, and he goes away in transition. Owen Tapper with Boyden going to the net. Boyden stopped by Kells. Would have been a big opportunity there for Brooklyn to get back to back in transition to try and climb back into this one. We know these two teams will meet in the first round of the playoffs. The question will become who gets home floor advantage. Brooklyn needs to win both these last two games and in convincing fashion. And that's over and back against Peterborough as Evans couldn't keep it at the offensive end of the floor. So Brooklyn gets the ball back. So a Peterborough win in either of the next two games here tonight or tomorrow night in Peterborough would clinch second place. Now cross floor passing and Katoni couldn't finish that one for the hat trick. Highland couldn't knock it over center floor and that stays at the offensive end and Peterborough with possession now. Holden Katoni. That first round series between these two teams goes seven games. It's nine consecutive between them. Holding Katoni whistles one that goes wide, and that's going to be over and back against Peterborough. Kells knocks it down in the crease, and Quinn Highland will get the restart in the far corner in the Peterborough zone. Brady Kiernan. These two teams met in round one last year in major series lacrosse playoffs. As Little John works it off to Kiernan. Now cross floor, Osborne spinning away. His shot gets stopped and the rebound picked up by Pilcher who slows it down as Brady Kiernan thought he was going off for a change. Now it's Little John. 
Works it up top, gets the screen. Lucas Littlejohn from distance, and Kells makes the save. It bounces through the crease, but Peterborough was able to keep that one out of the net. 4-1 series lead, or series win last year for Peterborough in the first round of the playoffs. McLaughlin steps in, that shot goes wide. Caleb Creaser looking for the loose ball, pushes it past Hazen, now bounces it forward, but he pushed it with his hand, so it's going to be Peterborough Bowl. Now it's Thomas Hogarth on the reset, pass down low, bounces out of the stick of Milligan, and it's Brooklyn Ball as Creaser now gets it into the offensive end. He'll wait for Tanner Cook off the bench. Now finds Boyden. Jack Boyden's shot gets deflected and goes wide. And away goes Robert Hope the other way for Peterborough. Holden Katoni. His pass gets deflected out of play by Jack Travassos. Eight minutes, 15 seconds gone in period number two. 7-3 lead for the Peterborough Lakers. Loose ball picked up by Brooklyn. After a good defensive check by Ben McDonnell. Quinn Highland in for Boyden. His shot gets stopped by Kells. And the rebound picked up by Peterborough. Jake Withers. And they got a penalty coming to Boyden here. Now it's Hogarth with Kells on the bench here for Peterborough. 15 to shoot for the Lakers, six on five, and then they'll be going to their third power play of the game. They're one for two. Tate Katoni behind the back pass. Down low, Evans up top. Hazen now off to McLaughlin. That shot misses wide. Milligan can't get it away in time. Shot clock violation, and Peterborough's going to the power play. And Boyden's going to head off for two minutes or less for that hack on the Peterborough defender. And Brooklyn, uh, the last couple possessions, kind of acting a bit too quickly. And I think Jason Crosby was a bit frustrated. I see him talking to the offensive side of the bench right now. Trying to say, calm things down a little bit. Use the ball. Use the shot clock. Work it around a little bit. Earn your opportunities. Don't rush it. Holding Katoni up top. That shot by Courier gets blocked in front. Courier picks it up against Michael White. Now Katoni, shot clock reset for Peterborough. McLaughlin into the corner for Evans, holding Katoni behind the back. McLaughlin shoots and he scores. It got through. Peterborough gets their second power play goal in three attempts, and they have an 8-3 lead. And a nice play there coming from Katoni, a behind the back pass. We'll see it. Look at him on, has the ball there, 99. Behind the back right here. And then a one-touch pass and a one-time shot from Eli McCall McLaughlin. Gets that one past Hutchcraft again. Just squeaking past. That's about the third goal that Hutchcraft has just had squeak behind him. Matt Gilray streaks in. That one gets stopped by Hutchcraft and then goes into the protective meshing and out of play. Just about 10 minutes to go here in period number two. That puts us at the midway point of this game is a pass in front of the net. Take Katoni all alone. He stepped into the crease, and it's Brooklyn ball. Peterborough Lakers scored the first two. Brooklyn pulled back even, and then the advantage has been 6-1 to one for Peterborough since, including a five-goal run. Osborne in front. Now it's Cook. His shot gets blocked. Little John after it in the corner. Now a loose ball gets picked up by Peterborough. Chains of possession, Little John picks up. Cross floor, cut, stopped by Kells. Little John picks up the rebound at the side of the net and resets. Boyden, off to Cook. Tanner Cook gets the screen from Pilcher. Cook behind the back, he scores! Unbelievable goal, Tanner Cook. Behind his back and bounces it over the shoulder of Landon Kells. And just when you thought he didn't have a shot as he's getting around his defender right here, you're like, where's he going to shoot it? There. Behind his back, bounced off the ground around 
Landon Kells and into the net. There was zero shooting lane there, zero. And he finds it behind his back and gets that one in off the bounce for Brooklyn's fourth goal of the game. Matt Gilray streaking in, stopped by Hutchcraft. Brooklyn going away in transition. I don't know what's more impressive, <laughs> the creativity or the execution. Exactly. To get a behind the back shot off and then to bounce it in. Not to mention you had a defender draped all over you as well. Not just a big body out there for Brooklyn. Tanner Cook getting it done. Now it's Little John. Kept that last play alive with his offensive rebound at the side of the net. And he was the one who checked it loose, too. Mm -hmm. He's been playing well here for Brooklyn as a 18-year-old, 19-year-old in major series lacrosse <laughs> who plays junior A. Also a pretty good hockey player playing in the Ontario Junior Hockey League with the Pickering Panthers. The point-per-game defenseman went to the World Junior A Challenge for Team Canada East in 2022. That tournament was played in Cornwall. Holding Katoni. Streaking in, his shot gets stopped by Hutchcraft and the loose ball as Creaser finally scoops it up and brings it up the floor. Little John played 17 games for Niagara and the OHL had three goals. As a 17 year old, played the last two seasons with Pickering, won an OJHL championship as well. And then losing the national championship game to Brooks in 2022. Kells picks up the loose ball and works it up the floor. Withers off to Turner Evans. McLaughlin gets checked down by Quinn Highland. That's going to be a penalty against Brooklyn. So Peterborough's off to their fourth power play. They're two of three so far. And a tough break there for Brooklyn as they were just settling into this game. They got a nice goal there from Tanner Cook and we're kind of working the floor back and forth a little bit. And now they get called for the penalty on the trip here. But that's really the good skill there of the player from Peterborough getting around his man and drawing the penalty, causing that to happen. So two for three coming in. This will be the fourth opportunity for Peterborough. Currently have Brooklyn doubled up on the scoreboard and we wait for these goaltenders to head back to their respective nets. Hot day outside here mm -hmm. in the Durham region. Around 8 o'clock when this game started, it was 27 but felt like 34. <laughs> yeah, outside. Very humid, very it, sticky. Luckily, it is air conditioned mm -hmm. in this building. Didn't used to be. Didn't used to be. <laughs> McLaughlin, his shot gets blocked in front. Rebound picked up by White, but Hogarth knocks it free. Who can find it? It's White, and he just sends it down the floor. Career picks it up off the bounce off the end boards, and Katoni sets up as the quarterback on the power play. Katoni through traffic, stopped by Hutchcraft, rebound picked up by Courier, checked down to the floor. Katoni off to Evans. Now Courier over the top, that shot gets blocked off to the near boards. Turner Evans in the corner, 15 to shoot for the Lakers. 8-4, Laker lead. Now it's Evans with the quick shot, that gets stopped by Hutchcraft as Ben McDonnell picks up the rebound. McDonnell steps over center and waits for some help from Brady Kiernan fresh off the bench. Angus routing as well. And Darren Elliott as that ball comes free. Colton Armstrong transition with Chad Tutton. Tutton in all alone and he scores. Chad Tutton in transition on the power play. Third power play goal of the game for the Lakers and it's nine for Peterborough. It was a power play goal, but just seemed like a break. And it was a breakaway here for Chad Tutton. All alone, just far side, picks the corner on Riley Hutchcraft for the ninth goal for the Lakers. 9-4 lead now here with 6.05 to go in the second. Tapper 
wins the face off and White picks it up. Six minutes to go in period number two. Creaser to Tapper. He scores. No, he stepped in the crease. <laughs> Jason Crosby's arms are in the air saying, where, where? <laughs> They'd say it, Jason, but the official's a lot closer than you are on the floor there to make the call. <laughs> Jordy Jones-Smith and Jack Travassos were able to keep their feet out, but Tapper looking for his third. And Jason Crosby still arguing with the official. And the official's putting up his hand to tell him to stop. Now a chance and they score McLaughlin again. for Peterborough, Eli McLaughlin, second of the game. And Peterborough able to score back to back a few times now, scoring bunches and picking the other corner this time. McLaughlin on Riley Hutchcraft, who's a bit deep in his net on those last two attempts. 10-4 now for Peterborough. They want to walk away from this one knowing that they have home four in the bag. That would render tomorrow's game in terms of standings and seating mm -hmm. relatively useless at the Peterborough Memorial Center. There is value though, as you were able to maybe rest some guys from that game. Get some rest for guys. If you're a team like Brooklyn, who's been up and down with players all year, Who's going to step up in a game like that to prove that they should get some playing time once the playoffs roll around? It's Brady Kiernan scores. So not going away quietly. Brady Kiernan gets his 19th of the year, his first of the night. And Brooklyn back within five. And we'll see if this can jumpstart anything for Brooklyn as one of the usual goal scorers finally gets on the board here for Brooklyn. As we said, it's Brady Kiernan. You see him coming in hot there off the bench, takes the pass, and within a couple steps gets the shot off. Owen oh, Tapper fighting for that ball, knocks it free off Matt Gilray, and away goes Brooklyn. Little John in transition gets knocked down, and a penalty coming up against Peterborough, and it's a penalty shot for Lucas Little John. The bench called for it and gave it to the official. And they're going to wipe the floor here first, actually, before they we have this penalty shot. So Jake Withers wins another face off, but once again, Owen Tapper just not going away quietly when Peter Roach tries to work it up the floor. And then once Tapper knocks it free, instead of trying to go in transition with the ball, gets the change, Little John fresh off the bench and then draws the penalty shot call as he was streaking in on the breakaway. And we'll have another look at it here. You see Little John with that couple step advantage around the defender and gets shoved to the floor as he shoots. And he'll have a chance here on the penalty shot. The 19 year old Lucas Little John to pull Brooklyn within four. And he missed the net. So we'll get a face-off at center floor. Good opportunity for Brooklyn, but they can't convert. 4.37 to go in the second period. And you see Lucas Littlejohn here tried to wait out the goaltender, Landon Kells, who wouldn't bite, wouldn't really move very much or give him anything. Held solid, if anything, Littlejohn might have had on the floor between the legs on Landon Kells, who was looking to take care of the top half of the net and left the bottom a bit exposed, but Little John had his plan and just did not execute as he would have liked. Tommaso steps in for the faceoff for Brooklyn. And Withers scoops it free. Gilray off to Chad Tutton, picked up his first goal of the season earlier on the power play. Three of four on the man advantage here for Peterborough. So Brooklyn came into these last two games of the regular season just to go back. Now they're four goals back of Peterborough for the power play goal lead in major series lacrosse. That shot whistles high from Eli McLaughlin looking for the hat trick. Now Quinn Highland in transition, has a chance up the floor. Highland with speed, drops this one back. Travasso steps in and that gets stopped by Kells. I like that look though on the rush like that. Find the trailing guy who's open and has a lot of floor to run with and no defender on him for the clean shot. 
Peterborough goes back the other way and sits up offensively. Pass down in front, but Hutchcraft takes it away and stretches the floor for Ryan McCrory. McCrory drops this one back. Kobe Hanser. Works it off. Pilcher shot misses the net. Ogilvy starts going the other way in transition for Peterborough. Ogilvy. Plays it back to Witte. Now it's holding Katoni off the bench. Thomas Hogarth. Milligan. Take Katoni. Back to Holden. With speed into the middle, and he scores! That's the hat trick for Holden Katoni. His 28th of the season, and it's 11 5 Lakers. We know he's got that booming shot and that pinpoint accuracy, but what about the legs on Holden Katoni here? You'll see him just all of a sudden, a couple strides, excel into the center of the floor and fire it mid stride for his third hat trick goal of the game. Just past Hutchcraft. He was having trouble tracking that one through some traffic. Six point nine so far for Holden Katoni. Three goals, three assists. And he's only extending his lead in the MSL scoring race. Coming in today with 66 points in 13 games. This being the 14th for him. To make that 72 points here for Katoni. 28 goals on the season. Another 44 assists. And how about the man chasing him in the standings with 61 points, Lyle Thompson. Good company to be with. Yeah, not a bad guy to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <laughs> but if you ask Lyle Thompson, he'll ask which team's at the top of the standings. <laughs> and that, they hope to be decided in the playoffs. Brooklyn will have the first round series against Peterborough and try to have something to say for it. Brady Kiernan at the offensive end of the floor and shot clock violation against Brooklyn. Brooklyn comes into this one eight and six, but with a one and five record this year against Peterborough and Six Nations, yep. and a seven and one record against Coburg and Brampton. So taking care of business against the teams at the bottom of the standings, but when it comes to the teams at the top, they just have that one overtime victory against Six Nations so far this year and just seem to be caught in the middle of the upper and bottom tier in yeah. major series lacrosse. And that overtime win against Six Nations came earlier on in the season where we had a chance for like, who? Maybe, maybe Brooklyn is part of this top tier in the MSL here. Tanner Cook. Fires the shot. That one gets stopped by Landon Kells. Darren Elliott on the rebound for Brooklyn. So a no fresh shot clock. It's five to shoot, and they step in the crease. And Landon Kells makes the save anyhow on Pilcher. I thought Kells had made the save originally. It never got to him, so the shot clock never reset. As Turner Evans for Eli McLaughlin. That one gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Travasso's chasing it down into the corner and picks it up against Turner Evans. He has a goal and four assists in this one so far. 21 goals, 35 assists now on the season as Kells makes the save that time. He looked behind him a little bit, though, too. Some nights you get those bounces, and Peterborough's gotten them here tonight. Take to Tony. Over the top, stopped by Hutchcraft, then the rebound picked up by Ryan McCrory. And Brooklyn will call a timeout with the game clock lower than the shot clock, so they'll have the final possession of period number two and try and go into the break down by five as opposed to six. And I think on that, it was actually Riley Hutchcraft that called the timeout after getting that ball off to the defender to move the ball up the floor. And we'll see if he stays on the bench. I anticipate he likely will. He is at the bench now, obviously, grabbing a drink, but Gavin Prout there talking it over offensively with his guys. And the head coach from Peterborough doing the same for the defenders on the Lakers. It looks like Tanner Cook is on the bench right now listening in, so we'll see if he hops over onto the floor. I anticipate he likely will being that big body presence. A lot of instructions here coming from Proud and 
the coaching staff. Yeah, Tanner Cook's going to hop on the floor. And Hutchcraft is on the bench for the sixth attacker. Osborne, Little John, Pilcher, Boyden, Cook, and Kiernan for Brooklyn. They'll start from their own end. No difference between game clock and shot clock. So uh, shot, the game clock didn't start, now it started. <laughs> this should be the final possession. The timeout was called 26 seconds on the game clock, 28 seconds on the shot clock. As Brady Kiernan. Not to Boyden. Now pass in front. Cook gets stopped by Kells, and he traps it down, and Peterborough will just wind out this second period. They'll send it down the floor, but it missed the net. And wouldn't have got there in time, so the Lakers take an 11-5 lead into the second intermission and are 20 minutes away from a home floor advantage in the first round of the playoffs against this Brooklyn Lacrosse Club team. And if Brooklyn wants to have home floor to keep that going, they got to get at least six goals in that third period to force overtime and try to get the win. Got to get a couple early in the opening minutes in that third period to have a chance. We'll see what they can do. Holden Katoni traded earlier tonight in the National Cross League from Rochester to Philadelphia. He's leading the way for Peterborough. Three goals, three assists, and his Peterborough Lakers have an 11-5 lead. We'll have your second intermission coming up for you next on Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. on City TV, the best of the best. That is amazing. Yes! Hit the stage. This has always been my dream. You're a superstar. You are the ones to be. With performances that will blow you away. Oh my God! Yes! He's on fire! This is how you do it! This is what AGT is all about. America's Got Talent. All new Tuesdays, 8, 7 central on City TV. Or stream on City TV Plus. Yeah, or CityTV.com. Smudging is a very important part in our life as we are learning to walk the good way. When we smudge, we use the sacred medicine, the white sage, the sweet grass, the tobacco, and the cedar. It cleanses negative energy and replaces it by a positive energy. When I smudge, I cleanse my end and my eagle feather and start cleansing my breath to have better words. I will smudge my eyes so I could see the better things offered to me. I will smudge my ears to hear the good thing that people have to say. I will smudge my hair to have good thinking from my head. I will bring the smudge to my feet so I could walk in respect with our mother, the earth. Smudging is the way we give our prayers to connect our spirit to the creator. We express gratitude for the gift of life, the learning, and growth. Center in Whitby, the Peterborough Lakers lead 11 to 5 against the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club here after 40 minutes of play. Andrew Osman alongside Jack Moore and Andrew, second period didn't go the way Brooklyn wanted. They were able to keep pace a little bit better after Peterborough went on that long run to end the first period, but still find themselves down by six at the intermission and only have 20 minutes to try and climb back into this one. We've only seen flashes of an offensive presence really from Brooklyn in this one. I haven't been able to get back to back goal since the tying it up at two in the first period of play. And, and after that, it's really been back and forth on the floor. Haven't really had that sustained pressure like they had had maybe at a couple times in the first period. The second period didn't really have that so much. They got into some penalty trouble. Holden Katoni kind of took over and is controlling the game a little bit, which, you know, if you're Peterborough, that's exactly what, what you want your stars to do, take over and take control of the game. 
And so Brooklyn's having a hard time right now kind of solving the Lakers at this time. Well, I, and and there's some differing opinions on, on the schedule to end the year with mm-hmm. Brooklyn and Peterborough playing two games. And at the beginning of the year, if Peterborough finished first and, and you thought that they could have if, if they wouldn't have played Brooklyn but in the first round of the playoffs, but they will play them. And now potentially nine games in a row against each other. But really, if you're Peterborough, you get to see what you have against these guys. And this must feel like a really good tone setter mm-hmm. going into the playoffs as we take a look at the highlights from period number two. The Peterborough Lakers were able to get on the board first, just like they did in period number one. And it was Riley Hutchcraft that was having a bit of a struggle there. The couple squeakers that went in, that one from Austin Hasen. And then right here as well, another squeaker that bounce, 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 and eventually gets kicked in the net. Whether it went in before or not, it eventually went in, at least off a Brooklyn player. And a nice one-touch pass and a one-time goal there. And Jack Travassos running the floor, getting the goal there for Brooklyn. And what about that one there from Tanner Cook? Bounced off the floor, into the net. A great play there. But then, yeah, Peterborough just takes control and picks the corners on Riley Hutchcraft. And that's McClellan for another goal for him. And then right here, holding Katoni, taking control and taking ownership of this game offensively for the Lakers. And that's where we sit 11-5 after two periods of play. So if you're this Brooklyn coaching staff, mm-hmm. Jason Crosby, Gavin Prout, what's your message to this Brooklyn lacrosse club team in the intermission going into the third, knowing that, A, you have to go to Peterborough tomorrow night and play at the Memorial Center for the final game of the regular season. And then you'll have to end up there again for game one of the playoffs as well. Well, I think what they're probably saying is, I'm not going to say they're going to admit defeat or anything like that, but just looking at it, 11-5 to five here, one period to go. You have to win this game, and you have to win tomorrow for a chance at home floor. So the odds are really stacked up against you. Not to say they're not going to come out and try to win this game. I think what, what they're saying in there, and Jason Crosby and the coaching staff are saying, let's just, you know, let's try some things here. Let's work on some chemistry. Let's work on some of these things we're doing in practice, see how it works against this team. What's in favor for Brooklyn, though, is that here tonight, most of the top guys are in the lineup for Peterborough. So for Jason Crosby and the squad, they get to actually have a chance to look at this Peterborough team, whereas Peterborough, you know, there's no Kyle Waters. There's no Connor Kiernan in the lineup. Um, you know, Pfeiffer, a couple of the other guys that usually are in the lineup. Zach Kerrigan not here for Brooklyn. Peterborough's not getting, any, getting a chance to really look at who they might actually face in the first round. So, you know, if I go back to your original question about what the coaching staff's saying, I think they're saying, let's just see what Peterborough has here. Take a look at it. Let's run this game, work on some things like we do in practice and just see where we come out after the end of this one. Well, and to add to that point, no Adam Peroni, no Jake Stevens, mm-hmm. no Jacob Saunders. There's a number of I think Brooklyn we named about players. half the lineup that would play in game one for and, the most part, really. And that's really been this season yeah. for Brooklyn is the carousel of players. There hasn't been a consi- consistent lineup, and that makes it really difficult to A, build chemistry, and then B, try and get some momentum going because you look at the way the Brooklyn season's played out, the first six games of the year, one loss, one loss, one loss, mm-hmm one loss one loss and they went three and three then they won two and then they lost two they're coming in off a two-game winning streak Mm -hmm. and then they have two tough games against Peterborough to close out the season where you can look at them at two losses and it's just been back and forth and they haven't been able to build off Mm -hmm. victories string multiple more than two wins together in a row and that's something that if you want to have a chance in the playoffs against the Peterborough against the Six Nations that's what you're going to have to do but with these big guys that we've mentioned like the Kiernan brothers and Kyle Waters, Zach Kerrigan even, that has been struggling as of late in the latter half of the regular season here in the MSL season specifically. We do see that those flashes. The power play gets to click. They're up there, um, you know, just second in power play goals four on the year. So this offense can click. The defense does well. When you have Jordy Jones-Smith and Jack Travassos moving the ball up the floor for you, the speed, we saw it. Both of them scored today off the transitional play on the rush. They have those guys. But as we said, it's just been a mix of players playing together. If they get those guys that can move the ball up the floor, that can work the ball in transition and on the offensive end of the floor, get those goals on the power play, we all have an exciting first round series between these two teams yeah well we got a third period to play here tonight peterborough leads 11 to 5 against the brooklyn lacrosse club and we have the third period coming up for you next on major series lacrosse on rogers tv you must be the reporter come with me so, Miss McGill, 
How does it feel being Canada's famous women engineer? The real story is the work we've done retooling this factory. To build the Hawker Hurricane. Indeed. 40 planes last month with a capacity of up to 100. Our fighters are over England as we speak. Of course, it pains me to see airplanes mass produced like box cars or baby carriages. But in war, we make concessions in favor of innovation. You must feel at home, though, managing all of these women. I'm not here to manage women. Well, you must admit, it is an unusual job. I'm the chief engineer here. I do what engineers do. That's all. What are we doing now? We are to win this war. We need to know how she flies. Elsie McGill was the world's first female aeronautical engineer. She oversaw Canada's production of Hawker Hurricanes during the Second World War, earning her the nickname Queen of the Hurricanes. My daughter is seven years old and has a frenemy. They have play dates that always end up in a fight or tears. This friend bosses her around and treats her poorly, but she still wants to be her friend. What's a parent to do? I would let them acquiesce to a certain amount. And then, you know, when they're at this age, you still need to be supervising their play dates. So I might step in, not to correct the bossy child, but it's my child that I'm concerned about. I would just expose her to other people, teach her to have a voice, and yeah. let her know that she's got options. Six-goal lead for the Peterborough Lakers after 40 minutes of play against the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club at the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy. Jack Moore, Andrew Osmond, and the Rogers TV Durham uh, crew with you here for the final home regular season game in 2023 for Brooklyn. Eight and six record and close out the MSL season with back-to-back -back games against the defending champion Peterborough Lakers. Jake Withers on the face-off against Jack Travassos. And like we've seen for most of this one, Withers wins it, but a bouncing ball in front of the Peterborough bench. And a battle for it as Michael White can't find it. And Robert Hope comes away with it for Peterborough, but gets knocked off the ball by Travassos. So it's Brooklyn with possession. Brady Kiernan gets stopped by Lyndon Kells. Good hard physical start here for Brooklyn going hard. You see Jason Crosby high-fiving and patting his guys on the, as they come onto the bench. Boyden scores. 35 seconds into the third. Brooklyn gets the first goal of the final frame and pulls themselves back within five. Well, you asked me, Jack, what I thought the coaching staff was saying in that intermission, and it was definitely motivational. This bench is hyped up. The high fives are rolling around. There's belief, I think, that they're going to try to come back in this one after that goal there from Jack Boyden, who made a couple defensive mistakes, took that penalty earlier on in this game that led to a Peterborough goal. He's happy to get that one back for his squad. So an 11-6 lead now here for Peterborough as a loose ball gets picked up by Woody. And Peterborough will get their first possession of period number three. Eli McLaughlin, two goals, three assists in this one. Off to take Katoti. Milligan into the corner for Courier. Into the middle up top. Courier off to Milligan. Milligan off to Katoni. Off his cradle. Travasso's battling for it. Three seconds on the shot clock, and it will expire on Peterborough, and it's Brooklyn ball. So good defensive possession mm -hmm. there. You said it, the physicality, set the tone, don't make it easy on Peterborough. No. Jason Crosby and his team make sure they fight for every second and every chance here in the third. That shot from Osborne gets stopped by Kells. It's one thing to start the period like that and come out with that energy. It's another thing to sustain it yeah. for 20 minutes. Part of it, too, is maybe even saying, well, they got their top guys here. Let's make them earn it. Let's work them a little bit. We got potentially nine games. Tapper in transition. Oh, big 
saved by Landon Kells. Reaches behind him and kept it out of the net. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, and Tapper stepped in the crease earlier. Now a chance the other way. And Chad Tutton gets stopped by Riley Hutchcraft. Tapper stepped in the crease, thought he had a goal. Had a wide open cage and Landon Kells reaches back that left arm. <laughs> oh my. How about those reflexes? We had arguably the goal of the year earlier with Tanner mm -hmm. Cook. And Kell said, all right, well, I'll get the save of the year in this one as well. As that shot was stopped as Darren Elliott checked down to the floor. And that one, too, a nice sliding kick out to keep that ball out of the net. Brady Kiernan picks up, and Brooklyn gets the shot clock reset. They get it on the offensive end as Kiernan got knocked down. Brooklyn's bench wanted to call Little John up top. Now Pilcher steps in, and a penalty coming up against Brady Kiernan. Kiernan thought he was doing to Colton Armstrong what Armstrong yeah. did to him. I think that's exactly what Brady was thinking there. He's saying, well, you're going to let him do that to me. You're in. I can't do that to him. That's a pretty quick call against Brady. He got thrown to the ground. He was getting, and the coaching staff is up in arms. Every single coach is saying, what's going on? I think they're going to get called here for a bench minor for complaining, but... I, I kind of don't blame the coaching staff for Brooklyn on that one. Brady Kiernan's head was essentially on the floor, being pinned there. He did not have the ball. There was no fight for a loose ball anywhere near that area of the floor. And then Brady just gets up and gives a bit of a cross check into the thigh of the defender and gets called. And now there's the bench minor, so it's going to be a five on three for Peterborough. Three of four on the power play already in this one. On their fifth and sixth chances, that shot goes off the post. Trapped down in the crease by Brooklyn. So a good job and awareness by Carter McKenzie. And Jordy Jones-Smith will bring it over mid-floor. More evident in the second period with the long change here in Brooklyn. But when they go to Peterborough tomorrow, benches in the middle because they're on opposite sides of the floor. Tanner Cook holding it up top. His long shot stopped by Kells and the rebound into the corner picked up by Gilray. And it's interesting because on the camera side, for those of you who will be watching on TV tomorrow, on the camera side where the Brooklyn bench is was beside the penalty box. Peterborough passing it around. That shot gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound picked up by Cotone. Courier down low and Cotone will pick it up off the wall. Courier to Cotone. Holding Cotone gets stopped by Hutchcraft and the ball goes into the protective meshing end of play. So you, Brooklyn has the advantage of having the guys in the penalty box right beside them as Courier's shot gets kicked out of play. No, it didn't hit Hutchcraft, so oh, it it's Brooklyn ball <laughs> and Peterborough it upset, but both referees <laughs> are calling it Brooklyn ball. It definitely went off Hutchcraft's hand and out of play, but <laughs> I have no idea how it bounces if it did. No, exactly. <laughs> so Brooklyn gets the advantage in Peterborough yeah. of having the penalty box beside them. Peterborough is on the other side of the floor, but the bench is more centralized on that side of the floor. So the Peets actually take the bench that Brooklyn's on when they play hockey out of that building. But the Lakers Want that take even. the away bench because yeah. it's centralized, so you get the same thing on both sides. That bench on the far side of the floor, also smaller than the one on the near side. Hmm. Because in hockey, that's the home bench. We're back to five on five, so Peterborough 0 for 2 on the power play there on the five on three. Now here's Milligan, and he scores. Left alone in front of the net, and makes it 12-6. And that was an even strength goal as the penalty did expire. So that's going to be 12 6 now as Peterborough doubles him up. You see him, Milligan just cut through there, unaware. Brady Kiernan late to the back check, a little frustrated. You see him there. Not quite the defensive player as Brady Kiernan, but he knows he kind of lost his man on that play there that resulted in the goal. Jake Withers wins the faceoff. Again, Mitch Ogilvie.
Picks up the ball and fires it into the fourth row. Just giving away a free ball to a fan. That's all that he's trying to do. A lot of the kids showing up, yep. starting to yep. show up for the Ontario Lacrosse Festival. Number of them in the crowd. Good contingent of Peterborough fans and foul called against Brooklyn. And Brooklyn coaching staff not happy with that mm -hmm. one either. Some frustration starting to boil over, over down by six. Just over five minutes gone in this one. Hazen steps in, fires that shot wide off the far side. Turner Evans keeps it at the offensive end. Ten to shoot for Peterborough. Now pass in front of the net, holding to Tony. Couldn't control it. Hazen with three to shoot. Pinned up to the boards, and the shot clock will expire. He got a late shot mm -hmm. off. As Hutchcraft right there to make the save. And Brooklyn takes over. Brooklyn's got to get going quick. They're down six. 13.50 to go. Now diving through the crease was Osborne on the chance. Brooklyn picks up the rebound. Lucas Littlejohn missed on a penalty shot earlier. Tanner Cook spins away from the defender steps in, taken away by Matt Gilray. And away he goes on a breakaway. Gilray with a chance to extend the lead. And it gets stopped by Hutchcraft. <laughs> Lucas Littlejohn off to Brady Kiernan. Driving in, Kiernan. Looking for Angus Rounding and found Darren Elliott. Little John picks up the loose ball off the far boards over the top, stopped by Kells. Bouncing ball in front. And the rebound picked up by Colton Anderson. Peterborough got the turf installed at the Peterborough Memorial Center about halfway through the season. So they played the first half on the same surface as there is here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center as Eli McLaughlin with the knockdown there that caused the foul for it to be Brooklyn ball. And now playing with the turf on the floor. Same surface as they have at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena for Six Nations. Coburg and Brampton's arenas, same surfaces here in Whitby. Little John stopped by Kells. The rebound picked up by Robert Hope. Mitch Ogilvy over center. With one second to spare and take Katoni off the bench. We'll drive in on Caleb Creaser. Katoni steps away from Creaser, goes to the net, and he shot it wide. Now Travassos knocks it free. Creaser the other way. In transition with Quinn Highland. Highland gives the screen. Creaser steps in. Stopped by Kells. Net comes off, and the rebound shot by Highland goes wide. You know, Crease would have won that one against his former squad. Got traded just days before the World Lacrosse Championships. As Hazen steps in, that shot gets stopped. Rebound gets picked up by Turner Evans. Went for Canada as the third goaltender. Thomas Hogarth up top for Courier. Silver medalist losing to the United States in the gold medal game. That shot goes off the crossbar after it hit... Hutchcraft's arm and goes out of play. And ends up just a couple feet to our left. Peter Brofin picks up the ball and we'll get a wipe down in the Brooklyn crease right in front of Riley Hutchcraft before we restart play here. And Hutchcraft's going to take advantage, same with Landon Kells, to get a sip of water here as we near the midway mark. Usually they do around this time. Let's take a look at that Landon Kells save from earlier where he robbed Owen Tapper on the doorstep. Well, you'll see Tapper here just trying to stay out of the crease, which he does, and over the top and pulling over the shoulder there is Landon Kells sprawling around. At this point, he has no idea where that ball is, but he did just enough to make the stop. Great one there. One of the saves of the year for sure from Landon Kells. Peterborough with it at the offensive end of the floor. Eli McLaughlin gets the screen, works this one off. Hogarth's shot, stopped by Hutchcraft, and it will go the other way. Brooklyn ball. 
And I don't want to split hairs here, but it is 12-6, it's a six goal game. I know it's splitting hairs, but it feels like if you're Brooklyn, you could not allow another goal and you have to just get to, get to the scoring side of things. Brady Tiernan gets stopped on that one and Peterborough comes away with the rebound. Jake Withers to mid floor. And what you could, again, we brought it up earlier, the feeling out process of these two games. There's a pass in front of the net, take Katoni scores. There's that goal you said that <laughs> Brooklyn couldn't concede. Take Katoni gets his first of the game, 16th of the year. It's 13 6 Peterborough. Yeah, take Katoni here, getting that pass left all alone. Defensively here for Brooklyn has been the struggle. Losing their guys, watching their man just run right by them. A few times just like that where Peterborough is able to get close to the net untouched and have a clear shot on net. As I was saying before, that goal went in the feeling out game, but like we've said for Brooklyn, just so many guys not in the lineup tonight. And it depends on the roster that travels up the win 15 tomorrow. Yeah. And those two, tonight and tomorrow's roster, as that shot gets through, Josh Courier with the hat trick for his 20th of the year. And this one a rocket from up top to make it 14 to 6 for the Lakers. Josh Courier got a couple earlier in this game, was quiet for a long stretch, but here he goes once again with that ball, stops up and goes far, or near side rather, cross freeze kind of fooling Riley Hutchcraft who was getting caught a bit carried away, moving to his left a bit too far. And Courier picks the corner and Peterborough again wins the face off that they've done so much here tonight. Splitting up my talking point again too. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Well, I just finishing off that point, the <laughs> roster tonight, the roster tomorrow, and the roster for game one of the playoffs could all look yep. very different for this Brooklyn lacrosse club team. The one thing we knew, no barring an injury, is that Riley Hutchcraft will be backed up by Caleb Martin. That's something mm -hmm. that we do know, but it's the other 18 spots and the runners that Brooklyn has to figure out who's going to be in the lineup and who's going to be away as they try a quick passing play for Brady Kiernan, a shot clock violation against Brooklyn. We'll get yeah. Peterborough back the ball, but it's who's going to be available, mm -hmm. who's not going to be available, and who can we use, whether they're from the Merchants, whether they're from the Whippy Warriors, and how we're going to slot them into the lineup. It could also very well depend on how the Merchants playoffs are going as well, and when those games are scheduled, and where players will be, and where they'll be available, and when. That might play into it as well, but two names that Brooklyn would really need are the, you know, Connor Kiernan and Kyle Waters. Those are two of the bigger guys not in the lineup tonight that have missed a number of games themselves this season. But those two names, you know, without the two of them, it almost, in my, my view, doesn't matter maybe who Brooklyn has. They'll be in super tough against this Peterborough team without those two guys. You always know coming into the year that Peterborough's going to be a tough out. And this is mm -hmm. a Peterborough team who, as Boyden steps out in front, and that shot gets tough. This is a Peterborough team that locked, lost their longest tenured player in Sean Evans, who only played one game at the beginning of the year. And then because of off-floor issues between him and the city and the team, what didn't finish out the year and got reassigned to senior B. But Peterborough just keeps on trucking, and, and now they try to keep pace with Six Nations, and it feels like those two teams fight it out atop all the time in Major Series Lacrosse. Six Nations gets a big boost because they don't want Peterborough to win again this season because Peterborough's taken the last few Major Series Lacrosse championships, and Six Nations wants to be that team to represent Ontario. Yeah. But Brooklyn just sitting in that middle where they're within striking distance. You mm -hmm. can see the base of it there, and it's putting it together against the top teams. Again, like we mentioned, one in five against Peter Rowan Six Nations this season, seven and one against 
the bottom two teams in Coburg and Brampton. And a penalty coming up here to Peterborough, so Brooklyn's going to their third power play of the game. 0 for 2 so far. Just under 7.5 to play, a 14-6 lead for the Lakers. Yeah, for Brooklyn, it's really a matter of players and consistency is the biggest difference. It's really hard to see what this team would be with that full set roster game in, game out against teams like Peterborough and Six Nations to really see how they compete through an entire season. And obviously those teams face injuries and yep. players being away and not available for whatever reason. Of course, Six Nations lost a number of players to the World Lacrosse Championship mm -hmm. for the Haudenosaunee Nation. But the availability and, and the ability to put it together, Six Nations still 13-2 and two this year as we see the penalty against Peterborough that will send Brooklyn to their third power play of the game. 7-0-4 left in period number three. So Brooklyn not able to get a power play goal so far in this one. As we said before, they average 2.4 a game and have the second most power play goals on the season. So far, Ofer here tonight. But they are without three of their main power play guys, so there is that. Lucas Littlejohn shot over the top, gets stopped by Kells, so no over and back. And it's going to be Brooklyn Bowl as Hutchcraft restarts from just outside his crease, and Pilcher brings it back up the floor. 25 to shoot for Brooklyn on the shot clock restart. Littlejohn to Pilcher. His shot stopped by Kells, and the rebound picked up by Peterborough. Hope off to Gilray. Long rangey Gilray stepping away from Lucas Littlejohn, and Peterborough trying to kill off as much time as possible on the penalty kill here. Eli McLaughlin back onto the floor as Austin Hazen off to Holden Katoni. Down low, goes off the end boards and off the back of the Brooklyn net. Picked up by Kobe Hanser, and away goes Brooklyn. Boyden to Pilcher. 41 seconds to go in the power play here for Brooklyn. Little John up top. Lucas Little John off to Boyden. Cross floor, Cook fires a shot. Kells makes the save. And Jogovi found the rebound. And Withers brings it back up the floor here for Peterborough. Chad Tutton with the goal in this one for the Lakers on the power play, but it was a transition goal on a breakaway as well. As Little John gets checked off the ball by Withers. And Creaser knocks it into Peterborough territory. Picked up by Pilcher, and now Boyden steps in. Boyden checked out of his cradle as we're back to five on five, under five to play here in period three. 14 to six for the Peterborough Lakers. Second last game of the regular season for both these teams. Final one comes tomorrow in Peterborough. Pass in front of the net. McLaughlin couldn't find the hat trick as it bounced past him, but the loose ball picked up by Hogarth. Tate Cotone lost it to Ben McDonnell. And Quinn Highland brings it up the floor for Brooklyn. Cook gets the screen. Now works it off to Osborne. Pass in front of the net for Angus Routing, but he couldn't find it. And away goes Colton Anderson in transition. When Tapper fresh off the bench, snuffs out that attempt. Jordan Sturros for Colton Armstrong, holding Katoni off the bench, having himself a good game. Played his university lacrosse in the NCAA for Johns Hopkins. That shot gets stopped by Hutchcraft, and Brooklyn gets it at the shot clock violation as well. Boyd. the screen from Little John. Now down low for Pilcher, steps in, and that one gets stopped by Kells. Rebound picked up by Little John, and Tanner Cook picks up. Cook 
Gets the screen from Rowden. Throws Withers off of him. Cook fires a shot that goes wide. And that's over and back against Brooklyn. Just 3.08 to go here in the third period. And the clock's uh, not moving. And now it is. <laughs> Peterborough with a chance off the crossbar and out of play. Tate Katoni is looking for his second of the game. I think at this point, both these teams are not just thinking of these last three minutes. They're thinking of the next 60 minutes tomorrow and saying, let's get all get through healthy. We're going to get familiar with each other pretty quick, so. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know the Peterborough roster by now, <laughs> in about a week and a half, you will oh, know it very sure. well. Yep. <laughs> Milligan, pass in front, take Katoni, gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Ryan McCrory brings it up the floor. It's a nice snag there. <laughs> Was a good snag by Brady Kiernan. Came into this game, 18 goals, 17 assists for 35 points on the season. Added a, one earlier tonight, was looking for a second, but it's using your head. Blake Gibson McDonald blocking that shot off the side of the helmet. Brooklyn gets the ball back. Brady Kiernan off to Boyden, and he scores. Second of the game for Jack Boyden, his eighth of the year. Yeah, Jack Boyden, one of those guys looking to fight for a spot in the playoffs and doing the best he can here. Second goal of the game. That one just leans into it and rips it past Landon Kells. Just on the right side there of Landon Kells, who I don't, not sure if you saw that with a maybe a slight screen in front from his own defender. Withers with another face-off <laughs> win. And that's over and back against Peter Rowe, so it's Brooklyn ball, 150 to go in the third period. Coming into tonight's game, as we've seen in the in the pregame there, 2-0 is the season series between these two teams, and coming in, Peter Rowe's outscored Brooklyn 29-19. And right now they've doubled up the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club here with about a minute 37 to go. You just think back to that first period where Brooklyn was tied at two mm -hmm. and then Peterborough rattled off three unanswered to make it 5-2. Foul against the Lakers, so it'll go Brooklyn's way. And when you dig yourself a hole that big against a Peterborough, against the Six Nations, makes it even that, that much more difficult to come back from. Brooklyn team was looking to win their third consecutive game, but they'll drop to eight and seven at the conclusion of this one. With one game remaining against Peter Rose, about to take a penalty here. It'll be Jordan Sturros as shot clock will come to an end, and Hope and Pilcher giving some extra shots. So Brooklyn with 49 seconds to go in the game is going to their fourth power play of the game as we get some pushing and shoving in the Peterborough zone. Gibson McDonald off to the penalty box. And There's going to be more penalties here. You don't want to let all that fight out now. No. You potentially have eight <laughs> more of these coming up. And they'll just send Pilcher and Withers to their respective rooms and their nights will be over with just under a minute to play here in the third period. Withers is staying on the floor here, having a hard time getting ushered off of the floor. Now he does, and he's heading down the tunnel to the locker room. I don't know if they're saying, hey, 24 hours from now, we'll set the tone for game one. Looks like those will be offsetting misconducts. And we'll still have a power play for Brooklyn. You see the penalty. Coming up. 
was the original yeah. penalty right there. Sturros on Liam Osborne, who was down on the floor on the left side of your screen. And then there's yeah. just four seconds left on the shot clock when Tanner Cook threw the ball away. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the party started. <laughs> I think they're just finalizing exactly what the calls are. It doesn't seem too complicated. But they're just going to confirm. Not sure if it has any suspension or playoff implications. Getting a misconduct or two within a certain amount of time. And you see it here. All the rough stuff. Pilcher started it and uh, stepped away from it. But then coming in, I think there's a shot coming in. Well, we just missed that maybe, but a lot of really close yeah. talk. <laughs> Still trying to figure it out here with 49 seconds to go in a Brooklyn power play. Brooklyn's going to talk things over here. As we mentioned, a bit of a makeshift power play unit without Kyle Waters or Connor Kiernan and Zach Kerrigan. So getting some time on it is... Routing, and you'll see the punch, I guess, coming here. You'll see Pilcher center your screen right with the official there. Bit of a shove there, and another one. And Pilcher had his face mask grabbed. You see his head get tilted down there. Pilcher didn't really do much there, to be honest, to actually get ejected, unless he said a few choice words. But I'm sure the officials at this point are saying, it's 14-7, 50 seconds to go. You guys play tomorrow. Go, go finish his rest up. We'll be done, and let's get out of here here tonight and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Our mics are pretty good. I don't know if they're that good to pick up. <laughs> and it looks like we'll actually have five on five. So there goes Brooklyn's power play. But they will get the restart. Under a minute to play here. Cook fires a shot that gets stopped by Kells and the rebound picked up by Peterborough. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike and a 10-minute misconduct for Tilter and Withers. Jake, Jake Withers letting his play on the floor speak for itself with the domination in the face-off mm -hmm. circle here tonight. So that shot goes off Hutchcraft and end of play into the protective meshing, and there'll be Peterborough's ball on the restart. You know, Withers might not have a goal in this one, but... I don't know how many goals Peterborough got off the top of my head that came off of an offense uh, off the off the draw. A couple back-to-back -back goals, a few of them, because Withers is just solid in that faceoff circle. Countdown on the Peterborough Lakers will get home floor advantage in the first round of the playoffs against the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club with their 11th win of the season. This one comes 14 to seven over Brooklyn here in Whippy. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club dropped to eight and seven on the year and have a chance tomorrow night in Peterborough to stay above 500, but 14 to seven the final and a dominant performance here by the Lakers in. Yep, the Lakers making it known that they now own the season series 3-0 and will play their fourth and final game of the ser series tomorrow and the final game of the regular season tomorrow, which will be another tune-up for round one between these two teams as we get set for the MSL playoffs coming next Friday, starting on August 3rd. That was the final regular season home game for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. It's a 14-7 loss against the Peterborough Lakers, like Andrew said, tomorrow night. The Peterborough Lakers will host the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club for the final game of the regular season, and then these two teams will face off in round one of the playoffs. Well, we've had a great time bringing you these games in the regular season, and we're going to enjoy it a heck of a lot more come playoff time. We're ready to go for the postseason. For Andrew Osmond, our producer John Green, our phenomenal crew here at Rogers TV Durham, I'm Jack Moore saying good night from the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitman. Thank you.